Welcome back ladies and gents, now I think you'll be happy to know that this is the last section of um, Component 2 Learning Game C and it's the last section full stop for all your course. Now if this, this is of course assuming that you've done Component 1 first and then Component 2, so this is the last section. I can't imagine spending any more than a page, maybe a page and a half if you want to do this properly and get the distinction, at least half a page if you want to pa uh, pass. And this is almost like a review and I've called it section three review of the presentation methods used in the dashboard. In this section you have to identify how your presentation methods which means the graphs, the charts, the tables, the um, um, what do you call them, the slices, the filters, the um, validation methods, the conditional formatting, the if statements, the vlookups, everything that you've done, how they can affect the decision making process and therefore the end user's understanding of the information shown. Now, what you want to say is that there are certain things that affect it. You can't say that it doesn't because it will. Um, but there could be positives and negatives. So what I've done is put four things that you want to talk about. And these are the four issues that could exist. And this is the these are the four things that we are going to try to avoid. And you want to say this is important. These are the four issues or four um, problems that we could face. And you're going to explain how you tried your best to avoid these. Okay, so number one, you got, you said you, you you should mention that there are there is an issue that information being shown could be misinterpreted. Okay, um, now what that basically means is how the way you present the data in a dashboard can have an impact on the way it's interpreted by the people you use the, who use the dashboard. So, for example. Um, a chart okay now a chart is obviously a nice way of visually showing some information but if the, if the chart is linked to a, a, a table that's got 50 100 or in this case 500 500 uh, rows so that's basically 500 records or 500 people 490 to be precise a chart just shows it like as if it, it's a lot smaller than that so it can there is a chance and the risk of simplifying something that's actually a little bit more than that so data that that usually is detailed can be oversimplified yeah and as a result people might take something um, and it's not as black and white as that so it's harder to explain this without actually having an example so you have to find examples it's okay here's a chart from this chart you see this is doing better than that okay so in fact let me give you an example right now so you might have a chart that says the sales between two top films right uh, and you, you show one, it's okay, it's clear that film A is definitely doing better than film B. And the, chart sh the chart's showing that, yeah? And in fact, I'll give you another example. The months. You can see from the months that, you know, certain months are better than other months. In some months, you're making more money than other months. But that doesn't mean that the other months are doing bad. Not necessarily. The charts make it look like that. But in fact, if you look at the numbers, you might find that... Um, in one month, there was a thousand and seven hundred pounds worth of sales, and then the month after that didn't do so well was one thousand five hundred. We're talking about two hundred pounds worth of you know difference in the space of thirty days. So that's not really that much. So that's what we mean by information being misinterpreted. That charts and graphs, as as nice as they are to to get a, a simple brief overview of something, that's what just what they are, unfortunately. If you want detailed analysis, you still have to look at the data itself. You still have to look at the table and find that information. The second inf uh, issue that we could find is information being biased. Bias can occur when the data is presented in such a way that it appears to support a particular opinion or show the information in a favor favorable light. So you can say that sometimes someone could use information to justify an action when in fact it's not really as they make it sound um, and that could be because of the way the information was uh, gathered in the first place you know for example if a survey was done in town and it was done by one person who approached people with a survey the issue that we have is that that person has a choice who that person approaches you don't know if, let's just say it was a simple case of seeing how many people said yes to answering a question. It's a simple case of how many people would say yes. Are, mo are men nicer and more approachable than women? If that was a question and the person wanted to find out and then they did a survey and came back and said, look, 
20 women said yes and two people said uh, and 20 and uh, yeah 20 people said yes 20 women said yes and 20 men said no then it makes it look like it was 50 50 right or what if the person came back and said oh no, actually, let's, let's stick to that for as an example for a, for a second so 50 50 right but we don't know if that person only asked um 30 men and 20 out of 30 said that and therefore a third of, of men still said yes but there were a hundred people, a hundred women that was asked the same question. And out of the hundred, 20 people, 20 women said yes. But that means 80 women said no. So when you think of it like that, actually, the men seems more ap- approachable than the women. Right? So you have to have the full picture. And this is the issue that we have. Sometimes information can be biased, uh, depending on the way it's presented, depending on the way it's been collected as well. Number three, inaccurate conclusions being made. Now, sorry, let me just undo that. There we go. Um, Inaccurate conclusions being made. If the information in the dashboard is poorly presented, then it may lead to inaccurate conclusions. What we mean by that is this. There's an assumption that you've done a good job, isn't there? There is an assumption that your charts are perfect, that you picked the, the right type of chart, that the chart sizes are correct, and that you've picked the right type of data, and that the formulas are correct. There is that assumption that everything's working fine. But what if it isn't? What if something is wrong somewhere? Yeah, and that you did everything you could, but you missed something out somewhere. There is a risk, and there's still a chance that that may be the case. And as a result, the charts may be wrong. The summary page, the dashboard might be wrong somewhere. And if it is, that means the conclusions that you come up with and the recommendation that you give could be wrong. So those are the issues. So you want to see how that could be a a potential risk and a problem. Which leads on to the last thing, misleading charts. As you know, one of the most common methods of presenting data in a dashboard is to use graphs and charts. There are a number of issues that you need to consider when creating graphs or charts to avoid resulting the results of uh, being misinterpreted. If the data contains values that are to- totaled up, don't include both the original values and the totals, otherwise this will result in misleading charts. Include either the v- original value or the total. Yeah, You can't show the full table and the total. Show the total only or the full table is what we're basically saying. So. The charts need to make sense, yeah, and needs to be linked to specific data. A lot of data, for example, more than 10 rows, may result in a complex, difficult to read chart. If the chart editor doesn't have room to display the title along with the x axis, it will leave them out. However, once you enlarge the, uh, enlarge the chart, the chart, sorry, the titles will appear as there will then be room to display them. You should know this. If the charts are too small, you can't see anything especially if you've, got, if you've got too many rows or too many different uh, bits of data on there. So you want to explain that as well, that if the, the chart isn't the correct size, if there's too much on there, you, then the person reading it may not see the full picture. So you have to be specific about the chart uh, information being shown, the data, and not only that, the size must be correct as well. Okay? Um, so those are the main things. So far, I've talked about very general statements here what you need to do get to get the distinction is you need to find some examples from your work itself so you go back into your dashboard and see okay have you misinterpreted any information so you once you've talked about the generic issues here's what this, this here's why here's what this is how and let me say it again sorry i'm really losing my voice now um here's what this means here's how it can happen and here's why it shouldn't happen the next step is has it actually happened with you then you go to the next one. Here's what this means. Here's why this is important. Has it happened with you? Yes or no? Here's why this is important and what it will, and here's what it is. Has it happened? Yes or no? And last one as well. So you're not just defining each one. Yeah. Yes, of course you need to define each one and you say what they what they mean, uh, which is what I've just explained. Uh, why they're important to consider. But then you have to then make it relevant. You have to bring it back to your work. So you go back to your dashboard and say, okay, hey, here's an example. Have you misinterpreted data? Is there any bias? Is there any inc- inaccurate conclusions? And are there any misle- misleading charts? Now, if the answer for any of them is no, then say no. But you have to justify it. You have to say, here are the reasons why these are an, these are an issue. Um, fortunately, I haven't misinterpreted anything. Here's why I think this. Fortunately, I haven't uh, 
uh, been a victim. So yeah, I haven't uh, been. What's the word I'm looking for? I haven't made the mistake of um, having information that's biased, or I haven't um, drawn any in inaccurate conclusions. Here's the reason why I know this, and I haven't got uh, or presented any misleading charts. Here's here's the reason why. Okay, so. This is the way to get the distinction. If you don't do this, even as good or ama as amazing as section two might be, without this you can't get you can't get a distinction. So, there you go, ladies and gents. Um, I reckon thirty to forty minutes, fifty minutes max to get section three done, uh, and that's basically it. Once you've done this, of course, get it marked, and that's basically it. So once you get to this point, congratulations, well done, and thank you for uh, watching. I hope it goes well. And uh, yeah, good luck.